What's up gamers and welcome to my top 10 games of 2012. This rundown is a list of my favourite games of the past year. It's the ones I've enjoyed playing the most and the ones that I would recommend to any of you guys out there to try to buy so you can make your video game collection 100% sexier. See something you don't think should be there? Agree wholeheartedly? Then let us all know your choices for the best games of 2012 in the comments or as a video response after you've watched the show. But for now, sit back, relax and prepare to to disagree. Sony's Wonder Handheld the Vita is a wonder for only one reason. Everyone wonders why they bothered making it in the first place if they're not going to support it in any way at all. Out of the 15 or so retail games available, only a few are worth parting with your cash for, and Rayman Origins is still one of the only games I go back to on the system time and time again. The 2D scrolling action works perfectly on the handheld thanks to the tight controls and the intelligent level design. The hand-drawn visuals look so smooth and beautiful on the OLED screen, and the small levels mean it's perfect to pick up and play while you're on a train or having a poo. I wouldn't suggest buying a Vita for this game alone, but if you did get suckered into buying a Vita like I did, then picking Rayman Origins up will at least give it some use before you trade it in for a Wii U. Hitman Absolution is not the game old school Hitman fans were looking forward to. In fact, looking at it from their point of view, the game is a major disappointment, with its overemphasis on short, linear hide and seek style levels rather than actual hit missions. Still, I loved the dark humour in the game, and after a while, I got used to the new direction it was taking and started to quite enjoy myself. The real star here, though, is the Contracts mode, which lets users create their own missions to then challenge their friends with. It's highly addictive stuff, beating and rebeating your friends' scores while trying to find out actually how the hell they did manage to pull off that one hit that seems impossible when you try it the first few times. It really is a bravely original approach to user-generated content, and for contract mode it's worth the price of the game alone. Spelunky. It's the game that never ends and it's the game I'll never complete. But when I'm feeling like a bit of digital self-harm, I'll jump into this game and have a freaking awesome time. That is until I lob my joypad across the room. Now, I say the game never ends, but it does really. It's just that every time you play it, it feels fresh because all the levels are randomly generated, meaning it's always a challenge. And I say I'll never complete it because it really is rock fucking solid. Death comes from every angle, it's sharp and never sweet, and you can lose everything you've worked so hard to gain in one mistimed instance. It's hair pullingly frustrating, it's impossibly hard, but by God, it's so much fun, and it captures that one more go feeling incredibly well. You'd have to be a spelonker not to pick this one up. Ho ho! Talking about one more go, only one game this year beat Spelunky to the finish line for its have another go factor, and that was of course Trials Evolution. I often return to the game to find out exactly how badly my scores have been beaten by my friends, and although I'm utter rubbish at it, I still find it a joy to play. Four player multiplayer is the place to be with this game though, and my god I don't think I've had such awesome laugh out loud punch your mates in the leg style gaming session since Mario Kart 64. The Trials franchise has been distilling the perfect arcade experience for a long while now, and evolution is the fruit of its labours. It's fast, frantic and fucking funny, and with users generating their own amazingly original levels thanks to the incredible in-game editor, it's also a game that could potentially last FOREVER. Oh, PS Vita. 
You promised so much and delivered so little. I can't believe that after so long on the store shelves there are still hardly any games out for it. I would have and should have traded mine in a long time ago, but I didn't because of this game. And it's not even a Vita game, it's a PS Mini which can be played on the PS3 and the PSP. Velocity is a space-based indie game which takes all the vital ingredients of an addictive arcade game and turns it into one big lesson for Sony on how to make good handheld games that actually work well on its hardware. Using teleportation, muscle memory puzzles, a cool as hell soundtrack and sexy retro visuals to draw you into an easy to play but hard to master top down shooter, Velocity has cost me serious bucks when it comes to Vita trade in value, but my word I got all that money back in gameplay terms alone. Damn you Velocity, I hate you but I love you. Come on people, play this, it costs about three quid. When an Xbox Live indie game can beat Call of Duty to the number one most played spot in Xbox Live, then you know you must have an incredible game on your hands. Taking the PC game everyone knows and loves and porting it to the console could have been a daunting task, but 4J Studios managed it perfectly. Minecraft 360 Edition works so well with the Xbox controller and the simplified crafting mechanics make it such a joy to play. It fits perfectly on the console and thanks to recent and continued updates including the sought after creator mode, it's soon to be on par with the home computer versions in term of content. Got an Xbox? Then get this. They caught the fucker red handed, stabbing his wife, cutting her up as the boys came through the door. Some people say to me, oh games, they'll never be as emotional as films. So I say to those people, you're a bloody idiot. Yes, most games involve more pew-pew than boo-hoo, but in the case of The Walking Dead, Telltale Games' episodic masterpiece, you'd have to have a heart of stone not to be affected by some of the choices and outcomes you have to make in this stellar story. It's a bit hand-holdy, playing like a point-and-click adventure game that forgot to give you any hard puzzles, but it's the decisions you have to make and the way that they make you feel once you've made them which are the stars of the show here. It's at times sweet, but it's more often than not brutal, and it's an experience I would encourage anyone to try because it's literally one of the best story-driven games I've ever played. <laughs> I love games which give you the freedom to do what you want, and I love feeling like a badass, and Dishonored gives both of these things to me by the bucket load. The gorgeous visuals and enigmatic setting only helps to boost my love for this game, and at times as I was stalking my prey, I'd find I'd lose myself staring off into the distance at the fairy tale meets bubonic plague period architecture. It starts off pretty solid, but once you've learnt your skills, you're open to attack however you want. Some may go in guns blazing, but I chose to Batman my way across roofs and stealth kill as much as possible, biding my time and ninjuring silently through groups of guards. Truly good games lose me in the moment, and at times this one had me fully in its grasp, heart in my mouth, edge of the seat stuff, total absorption, and I loved every second of it. It's just a pity it's so bloody short. I've been gaming for a hell of a long time now, since games were on cassette tapes in fact, and most of you lot watching probably don't even know what a cassette tape even is. Many memories I have of my early golden years of gaming are rose tinted, and a quick go on an emulator will show me how poop those old school games actually were, and sometimes, for an oldie like me, that can suck balls. But Fez? Fez came out of nowhere and brought me back to those golden days of my childhood. This simple game holds a magic inside of it. It's a tribute to those gaming days gone by, built by a man whose love of the enchanting nature of video games is so apparent in his work. 
The 2D mixed with 3D visuals, the mind-numbing puzzles which involved me using a notepad with a game for the first time in years, the soundtrack, oh man, the soundtrack. Everything about this game is a joy. It creates in you that sense of wonder that pushed you on to explore when you were a child. It makes you think about it after you've turned off the console, and it will make you wish that all games could have the same amount of love and attention to detail lavished on them in the development process. It's games like this that will see the indie market rise up against the stagnating AAA title like Call of Duty, and I can't wait for it to happen. Please, please buy this game. Far Cry 3. What can I say about this game that I haven't done a million times already in the countless live streams I've already done? As a single player campaign, it's built on what I love from Far Cry Instincts and ditched all that crap that didn't work from Far Cry 2. The open world is huge and full of random encounters which keep it all feeling busy and alive, and every time I play it I have a brand new unscripted adventure story which is my own to control. The time you spend on Rook Island will be your own time, no one else's, and that's what makes it so compelling. It's got the huge world and freedom of choice offered by Skyrim, mixed with incredibly solid shooter mechanics, and it works perfectly. The twisted characters and insane plot lines of the main campaign missions add to the incredible atmosphere of the game, and even though it's a tad scruffy around the edges, especially on the console, there really is no game this year that's better at drawing you in and creating such a huge, long-lasting piece of escapism. Plus, you can punch a shark in the face, and that's freaking badass. So there you have it, guys. That's my year of gaming in a nutshell. Well, okay, not in a nutshell. In a video, but you get the point. As with all top tens, there will be plenty of you who think this list is full of shit. But it's only my opinion, so let me know yours below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll love you more if you subscribe. Here's to 2013 and all the awesome games in it.